Hi, this is John Gallinetti. Here at Mount Hope Church, you will hear God's Word presented in a powerful way. When God's Word is declared in power, it sets the atmosphere for the miraculous to take place. As you listen to today's message, may God's grace and miracle working power change your life. Your Word, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Pray that the eyes of our understanding would be open today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. So I want to talk about energy from the Lord today. How many could use a little more energy? Yeah, I know. And uh, I believe with all my heart that, that today is, is prophetic and some of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you because it's an impartation of strength that God has for every believer who will seek Him for the last days. You need more than what you have right now, especially what's coming down the track. So an impartation of strength from the Lord for the last days. Everyone say last days. When I look across the landscape of America and even parts of the world, many parts, I see a dearth of energy and strength in many people's lives. And so when God's strength is low in the believer's life, they become a target for the enemy. And many times what the enemy will do is he'll try to get you to think that it's your wife's problem, why you have problems, or your husband's problem, or the kids, or whatever. And what you need to see is look beyond that and the manipulating forces that are beyond that. Take authority over that. First, build yourself up in the Lord and understand that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual hosts of wickedness, the Bible says. Now, the world doesn't understand it. The carnal Christian doesn't get it. Many believers don't get it, that the warfare taking place, the woke culture, and a lot of things happening is because there's been more demons released into the earth. But turn to your neighbor and say, you have authority over them. So when our strength in the Lord is low, we become susceptible very susceptible to temptations and um, setbacks and trials. And the old man tries to creep back up again. And so there's no better picture than this as in Samson. Samson was a judge in the Old Testament. And God anointed him. And the guy did feats that were absolutely insane. It was almost like a comic book hero come to life. How many like Captain America? Maybe Batman, okay? Superman. Whatever your comic book hero is, this guy would blow them away. He was actually a comic book hero come to life. And so his mighty strength, Samson now, who is a type of the body of Christ, has all the power, but his, his strength came from seeking the Lord, spending time with the Lord, obviously, and then keeping what was called the Levitical vow. The Levitical vow was you can't have strong drink, you can't eat out of a dead carcass, and you can't take a razor to your hair. When I was playing college ball at Grand Valley State, I was a freshman, and um, I got up, man, I smacked a few HRs in, in practice. And there was another Christian that was on the team. And I just got my hair cut. And he comes up and said, they would call me Gal. Someone called me Gal Jr. Gal, man, Samson cut his hair, lost his power. You cut your hair and you gained power. <laughs> and so Samson's issue was instead of pursuing the Lord and his purpose for life, he began to do foolish things. And he compromised his values that brought him so far in the things of God. And you need to be careful, and I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you and those watch online as well. You are living in the last days, and it's important to keep your guard up. Very important to keep your guard up. And to be alert, like Peter says, be sober, be alert, because your enemy, like a roaring lion, seeks people out to see whom, made the, whom he may devour, then the Bible says resist him in the faith and he'll flee from you. But here's the scoop with Samson. 
is that in an hour of weakness, his low level of strength, he gave his secret of strength to Delilah, who eventually betrayed him. And the point is this. We can control, I love this, and even conquer our weaknesses by drawing energy from the Lord. Everyone say that, energy from the Lord. Energy from the Lord. You have it in you right now. How many would like a little bit more? (laughs) Of course, that's why you're here, you see? And there's a lot more to be received, okay? And so it's drawing close to God, we receive strength from Him. Now, one of the most intriguing promises found in the book of Psalms is in Psalm 18. We're going to look at it in a minute because it speaks of the strength and energy of God gives to those who look to him and put their trust in him. And so in uh, Psalm 18, it says this, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. I love this. So he's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. So the Lord's your deliverer. My God, my strength, and whom I would trust. Now he's his shield, my shield, the horn of my salvation. And I will call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So if you have enemies coming at you, you can be saved from them as you call upon the Lord and draw strength and energy from him. It goes on and says, the pangs of death surround me. The floods of ungodless made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress... I called upon the Lord, and I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Now, distress is completely different than stress. With just the right amount of stress in your life, you'll move forward and conquer mountains. A guitar with the right amount of stress on its strings will play wonderful, but when it's too tight, it will break. Now, Distress is stress on steroids. Distress is high anxiety, pain, and sorrow. That's exactly what I mean. That's what distress causes. And um, so it's extreme anxiety, sorrow, and pain. In the last days, one of the signs of Christ's return is, is that there'll be distress, not stress, distress of nations with perplexity. And we're, we've already entered into that. We've already entered into that. We, we see all of the, the, the perplexities of nations. It's been happening for a while, but what happens, what's happening now is that there's, there's like a piling on of it. It's just, it's really starting to ramp up. And so it's really interesting. And so the good news is this, I love this, is that the Lord is your source of strength and he will deliver you and bring you into a broad place, the Bible says. Bring you into a broad place, Psalm 18. He also brought me into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according, watch this now, according to my righteousness. Now we're saved by grace, but when you're saved, you become the righteousness of God. So in other words, faith without works is dead. That means I've got to do my part and apply God's word to my circumstance to believe it and then apply it. Look, he goes on and says this, according to the cleanliness of my hands, he has recompensed me. So God's love is totally unconditional. Amen, church? It's unconditional. He loves people even though they're going to hell. Man, he loves them. I was bound and going to hell, but he delivered me. Praise God. And so, but his promises are conditional based on how we apply them to our life. And heaven and earth will pass away, Jesus said, but his promises, his word won't. You can go to the bank on it, man. It is awesome. It's also according to the cleanliness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and not have wickedly departed from them. And so then there's that intriguing promise. And I say it often in my prayer time. That by my God, I can run through a troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. (laughs) Isn't that something? That by my God, I can run through a troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. And so the thing is, is that if you believe, it's talking about overcoming things that you face in life. I I guess you get that. You can go out and try to leap over a wall, but you might hit it. And, And okay, 
But what, what they're talking about here is overcoming life's problems, overcoming the things that the enemy would bring at you as well. Why is our culture so drained today? Why is our culture so drained today? They're going in so many directions and trying to do so many things, it literally saps them of all of their energy. And so you can even see this into a lead up into like a big holiday weekend. Hey, where are you going? What are you doing? You going to the lake? You going to have burgers on the grill? You going to the game? What, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? And, you know, if your response is, well, I'm just staying home, you're a loser. <laughs> it's like that, that's, well, if you're not, if you're not doing something, you're, you're just a complete loser. And so there's this feeling of loss. Or you're missing it. Because they're having so much excitement, and all you're doing is just being at home. And then you're coming to church. Because the Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Wouldn't it be something if the church really believed that? And so, if you're not doing something exciting, you feel pressure and even some stress. It might lead to distress in your life. FOMO begins to set in. Okay, what's FOMO? The fear of missing out. So our culture is squeezing people into this ridiculous thinking that if you're not doing something exciting, then you're missing out. You know, I've shared this often before. I'll just, I think it's just good to share it again. The, uh, <clears throat> earlier on in my, my walk with the Lord, I think I was like 19, 20 years old, uh, all my friends were going up north. There's nothing wrong with going up north and going tubing and all that stuff. Except the tubes that I went on in high school were literally inner tubes with long extensions on them. And it would scratch the living daylights out of my body. I try to keep myself from it. How am I glad for the tubes they have today? I mean, they're sweet. And so, you know, the buildup of it, and, and probably about eight or ten of my friends were going up. They're going to go out to Higgins Lake and... We're going to go boating, and it's going to be great and all that. There's nothing wrong with it. And it was coming to Thursday. I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to stay home, you know, and just, you, 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 I mean, it sounds like the most boring thing in the world. You're just going to stay home. So I told my friends Friday afternoon, man, they're all gearing up. They're ready to go, man. Here we go, man. It's going to be awesome. And call it, gal, where are you? Well, I, I don't think I'm going to go. What? what? It's going to be awesome, man. We're going to have bonfires, burgers, and talk about the Lord. I said, you know what? It sounds great. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to stay home and read my Bible. You're going to what? I'm going to stay home and read my Bible. Now, it doesn't sound exciting, does it? You're going to stay home and read your Bible and, and not go out tubing and not have burgers. On and again, hanging out with a bunch of believers going up north is a blast. I'm, I'm all for it. It's great. I've done it a number of times. It's cool. But I just thought, you know what? I'm going to go the opposite direction this day, this whole weekend. I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm just going to spend the whole weekend in the Word of God. You know, it was one of the best weekends I've ever had in my life. Why? Because in His presence, or in His Word, is fullness of joy. And at His right hand are ple pleasures forevermore. You see, if you just take time, time, and just actually give it, and don't do anything else but just that, th your eyes would be so open to the power that resides on the inside of you and the strength that is for you. So, you know, they came back and they were all tired. I called them. I said, man, how, how was your weekend? Oh, I'm so glad you called us. Well, we're just all just beat, ragged, tired. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. What did you do? Now, I already told them what I was going to do, right? What did you do? I just stayed home. I read the Bible the whole weekend. By the way, church was awesome. The power of God was on display. There was an internet back there where you can connect on your boat. You guys need to loosen up. You act like you're at a funeral or something. Gosh, man. And so that became one of the best weekends of my life. Now, the world we live in is so lost, constantly on a search for the right fit, the right freedom, that right element that's missing in life, yet are searching in all the wrong places. Is it possible to be in such a desperate search for that right fit, and it's right in front of you the whole time, but because 
of the distractions and you're so busy, you don't even see it? The answer is a resounding yes. Yes. One of the ploys of the enemy is not just to try to discourage you, but he'll try to pull you on either side of the highway of balance. He'll try to get you where you get so busy doing so many things, where your to-do list becomes your God and not the presence of God. And so this is no better seen than in the life of Martha. This is nothing that you don't already know. But Martha was a person who hung out with Jesus, was right there, yet couldn't see the forest from the trees because her priorities weren't right. She wasn't evil. She was just missing it. And I don't know about you, I want all the strength that God has for me. She was missing it. But here's the, here's the, here's the situation, is that Martha is an exact mirror of our generation today. If you're not doing something big in America, don't get me wrong, I like big things. You're a loser in this culture. You, you just, oh my gosh, you're, you, know, what, you know. And so there's like, you've got to be so busy, going so much, so much. And what, you do, what happens is you become distracted, leads to confusion, it leads to distress and anxiety. We pick it up in Luke chapter 10. It says, Now it happened, as they went, they entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was what? Distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone, question mark. Therefore, tell her to help me. How many would like to go to the Lord and tell, just rat on somebody else? Man, I mean, that sounds good. I don't know about you, you know. There are times I would say, Lord, send fire down on that person, and then I got to change my heart, you know. I've not come to destroy men's lives, but to say them. There are times coming, but, but, you know, how many would like fire a little bit earlier than the judgment? Because some of you guys, you're acting so righteous, you know it's true. You cupcake. And so anyways, and so tell her to come help me out. So Martha was highly detailed, which is awesome. Probably high D, which I like too. They get things done. But you got to be careful in that because their prior, her priority was, was, was wrong. And Jesus was going to try to rearrange it. And when Jesus begins to rearrange our life, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's like, whoa, what's going on here? But when priorities are in line, the blessing and strength of God flows big time. Boy, does it ever. And so, and Jesus answered and said, and you know this, said, Martha, Martha. Now, when there's a double thing said, believe me, believe me, or Martha, Martha, or something like that, a very important foundational truth is going to be communicated in, what that, in, in the Bible world. That's what that means. Martha, Martha. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Not just a few things, but many things. But you know, you know, you can fit it. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that better part, which will not be taken away from her. How many glad you have something that will not be taken away from you? And so you're worried and troubled about many things. In other words, you're distracted and confused. That distraction will cause worry. Worry will sap you of all your energies have you ever worried about something so much that it just drains you? Again, you're in church. Don't raise your hand because you'll be guilty and feel something. I don't want that to happen, okay? But you worried about something so long where just how is it going to work out and all that? And then you come to church and you hear a message like Martha and drawing strength from the Lord and all that. Is that the Lord speaking to me? Turn to your neighbor. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, we have energy drinks in the world, okay? We have energy bars. I had one this morning, this little energy bar. And there are energy pills now, and there are big-time energy pills you can take. And so there's uh, the infamous five-hour energy drink, 
And sometimes I'll ask people when I, when I go into a mini mart or something or I go in there and, do you sell a lot of these? And the person told me at this separate occasion, they said, we can't keep enough in the store. We sell so much five-hour energy drink. Red Bull. Yeah, baby. Okay. Amp. There's Amp. And then there's Monster Energy Drink. And so if you see the, the Monster Energy Drink up there up on stage, that is, that is 666 in the Hebrew. The Hebrew lettering. You probably didn't know that, but now, now you, I don't know if you want to drink it now. But anyways. And so isn't it interesting that that, that company would take and put the Hebrew lettering on there, 666. Six, that's Hebrew lettering. That's Hebrew 666. Six, six. It looks like a claw, but it's, it's the Hebrew letters of 666 six, six in Hebrew. And it's monster. See, they're going off of that. So they're using the word of God for gain. And, and, and the majority of people are just drinking down 666. Six, six. And so anyways, now all those who drink monster drink will start sending me emails. And uh, hold on to your email, okay? Today, there are some 500 different kind of energy drinks. So there's a strength that God gives that will catapult you and me over anything and an energy drink can give to us. Isaiah 40 says this, Have you not known? I love this. Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator that ends the earth, neither faints nor is weary. Did you know that God doesn't sleep? <laughs> he, just, he, just, he neither slumbers. He's just always on top of it all the time. Think about it. Someday you're going you're to see God face to face. You can't do it right now in the body you're in because it's not redeemed yet. You need to be or you'd burn right up. But, you know, Moses got so close to the Lord. He said, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. And God spoke to Moses and said, nobody can see me and live. However, for this one time, I'm going to walk by you. And I'll let you see my hind parts. In other words, you can see my butt. <laughs> you guys need to loosen up, man. You act like you're in church. Okay, and so I'm going to walk by you. You can see my hind parts. And so Moses, you know, it was the 40 days up on, you know, Mount Zion. And he's there, and, you know, as he walks by, and, 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 and he opens up, and he sees, and he's just, he's completely changed, obviously. Do you know that you're going to be walking with Jesus throughout eternity? Now, he lives big in us right now. You are of God, little children. Greater is he that is in you than he's in the world. You have 70, 80, 90 years take a pill, lived 120, whatever, and, uh, and then boom, your earth suit turns to dust again, but that which is being renewed day by day goes home and gets a new body in heaven. We'll never get sick again. We'll never need monster drink again <laughs> or five-hour energy, and I'm not getting down people who drink that, no problem. You won't have to have a revival and coffee every morning. And you can eat all the hostess cupcakes and not get fat. Whoo! Come on, baby. Come on now. This is summertime. Amen? All right? Wow. It's really something. Okay, it goes on. Let's get going here. He says this. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And those who have no might, he increases strength. Everyone say strength. He increases strength. There's an there's a impartation for the last days of supernatural strength for every believer who will keep his ways and go after it. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men will utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Now that word renew means an exchange. There's an exchange of strength. And so when we wait upon the Lord, our strength is renewed like the eagles. Like it says in Psalm 103, you know, renew my strength like the eagles. And so, you know, you don't have to stand up. On the count of three, I would like you to say this. Renew my strength, Lord, like the eagles. On the count of three. One, two, three. Renew my strength, Lord, like the eagles. One more time. Renew my strength, Lord, 
like the eagles. One last time, renew my strength, Lord, like the eagles. See, when you say it, you create the atmosphere for it because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And so when you say that, you believe in your heart, you say that, you create the atmosphere, and people your age are getting older. We all get older, but you're going to get better. Stay healthy. And none of you are going to go home before your time. I need your butt here in church, man. Don't, don't get any ideas, all right? And so I need your help, okay? Okay, so it goes on this. But those who wait upon the Lord, those who exchange their weak, meager strength for His strength shall mount up like wings like eagle. They'll run and not be weary, and they'll walk and they won't faint. You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to walk in the plan and purpose of God for your life, knowing Him, multiplying Jesus in others, your ministry, multiplying that in others, reaching people. You see, on the job, having strength, when other people have to drink 49 cups of coffee, you have strength for the last days. Amen? Amen. You see, your strength from the Lord. And so, now, energy and strength in the believer's life today is so crucial for, for, for these reasons. We're going to wrap it up. How many glad you came to church today? Okay, number one, this is crucial. Number one, for our own sanity and personal warf- uh, welfare. It's crucial. The negative stress and distress that occurred in our society and culture, listen to this, since the pandemic has been overwhelming for the common person. All right? New stat, mental health care has skyrocketed in the last three years like never before in America and around the world. Skyrocketed. They can't find enough people to work in mental health care right now. You see? And you hear people say that. Listen to this. Did you know that according to Barner Research, now this is pastors, a whopping 42% of U.S. pastors are seriously considering leaving their pulpits. So listen, stress, isolation, political division are at the top of the list of the reasons why. Sharp cultural divisions, a rapidly accelerating societal shift away from biblical values, financial challenges, and the crushing expectations of others having sapped peace and strength from the minds and hearts of many pastors today. Stand to your feet right now. Let's pray for every pastor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every pastor right now. Every pastor, we pray for every pastor. Whatever their denomination, whatever their stream, whatever the badge they wear, we pray they would not give in to the end time tricks of the enemy. They would stay strong. We pray for a revival. Pray for every missionary. Pray for Brian and Deb right here in the front row. Pray for other ministers of the gospel. Lord, that they would not quit. They would stand strong in you in these end times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. see. Thank you for hooking up with me with that. And so for our own sanity and our own welfare, we need strength an impartation of strength for the last days. Number two, we need energy and strength to stand our ground in a generation that has gotten hostile to Christian values. I was shocked, and I shouldn't have been shocked, when I saw at the start of the Olympics how they mocked the Last Supper. And I know it's just inside of you, you're just, oh my God. You know, the drag queens and all that. And, and, and you know, hey, France, you, know, you wonder why you're having the difficulty that you are, okay? You look at Haiti. Everyone say, God bless Haiti. I've been to Haiti a number of times on mission trips. And I watch things. I see them, what, what you know? And so they, they dedicated that country to voodoo. You think, well, that's just Walt Disney stuff. Oh, no, it's not. Voodoo is real. And you wonder why all the earthquakes and all the problems and all that. Well, God's judging him. No. No. What you sow is what you reap. I did a crusade there, and there was, there was, there was about maybe a thousand people there. And back, there were, there were huts and and, and like cottages around, like up here, and I was down here doing, I was speaking, and I didn't even know this until afterwards, but there was, there was a, a lady who had like four kids, 
and she had a doll and she was doing voodoo on John Gallinetti. I was the speaker. And she was doing voodoo and puncturing me and all that. Guess what? I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> you can puncture all you want, baby. It isn't going to affect me. You see? Why? Because I serve Jesus Christ. That's why. And so they were doing that the whole service. Well, it was a, it was a crusade. The whole thing. And then at the altar call, there was about 100 people that came forward, which is awesome. And her three kids came forward. They left the house and they came forward. And then she came forward too and got saved. God, it's just awesome. And so here's a news flash. Satan is not moved. Wait, we're not there yet. I can't get there. I can't go there yet. And so there's a chess match that's going on right now in the world between the kingdom of God and the Lord and the kingdom of darkness. Satan throws something down and God says, I'll match that and take it even further. And he does. Satan will do something and he can't create. The devil can't create anything. All he can do is twist the truth. So he has something like this and kind of given the world perspective that Believers are weak and they, they really don't have a voice and they're in all that garbage. Ha, 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 my little pretty. And then there are athletes like this right here who on national television say, I just want to give the glory to God for this medal that I won. And just what does God do? He just rubs it right back in the face of Louie. There you go. How do you like that? How many glad you wet, read the end of the book and we win? And this person right here, holding up their Bible. Why were they doing that? We're believers, and we believe in the values of the Word of God. The Judeo-Christian thing, we believe that. We believe, I believe that is what they're saying right there. And so there are many of that. And did you know that after the, that Last Supper mockery, there were thousands of believers. I just found this out last week. And uh, thousands of believers in the street with guitars singing and worshiping the Lord. Whoo! Amen. Isn't that awesome? And so you got to be, are you guys here today? And so, and so the thing is, is that if you're watching the media, it will manipulate your mind to think that, oh, we're just losing the battle and all that. No, we're winning it. We're winning. There are voices everywhere. We've got Brian Deb, Guatemala. We've got other missionaries everywhere. There's a move of God in Germany right now. A move of God in Germany. There are pockets of, in Germany of revival taking place. And so it's happening around the world. Just because you don't see it or you're listening too much to CNN or, or Fox News. I know Fox is like the Christians, so whatever. You know, and so, and so do they really share news today? And so they'll have you thinking, these networks, oh, that's not, this, you know what, something that they, they, that, that, that they could do, that they could mock the Lord. Man, I'm just glad I'm not mocking God. How about you? Wow. Okay, let's move on. Number three. Now, this one's awesome. Turn to your neighbor and say, this one's awesome. We need energy and strength from the Lord to stand our ground against temptation, trials, setbacks, tests, and attacks. Here's the news flash. Satan is not moved by believers who yell scriptures as he is by Christians who just stand their ground. You can shoot your mouth off, saying law. And there's a, there's a point to yell and, and shout unto God when it's right. But Satan is not moved by that. He's moved by you just standing your ground. Listen to this. It's awesome. There is nothing more intimidating to the devil than a believer who knows their rights, stands their ground, resisting the devil through sheer immovableness. Sheer immovableness. See, now we're American believers and we want, yeah, we got authority over the devil and we're to put him in his place and all that. But it's not a bunch of screaming. But here's the other part. Having done all to stand, stand. I'm just, 
you know, like a rock, man. I'm not going to be moved. There's this picture of this buffalo I have for you. Look at that baby, man. Look at that guy. He's not, he's walking right into the wind, man. And we don't like seeing that in Michigan because we know it's coming. How many enjoy August right now? It's great. But that guy is just, he's, you know, he's not going to take the easy route. He's going to walk right into the wind. Man, if we could take that, that type of energy and inject it into the mainstream, the bloodline of the body of Christ, way more of us would live much more victorious lives. Amen? And so it's not some secret potion believer. It's just standing your ground and loving Jesus. Amen? And I love that. It used to be an old song when I first started going to church. I thought these people were freaks, man. They're pulling out handkerchiefs and and, but, but I, could not, I could not resist their joy, and I could not resist the presence of God that was in that place where I rededicated my life to the Lord and ran to the altar and all that. But they sing a song, I will not be, I will not be moved. Uh, and some of them would turn like this and go, what, what am I into? And I will not be, I will not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I will not be moved. I won't be moved. Now, you really want to sing that song, don't you? But I don't got the lyrics. And so we would all mess it up big time. But sheer immovableness. I'm going to go to church. I am not going to be moved. Everyone say, I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved. Just like, you know. And so that buffalo is one tough dude. And Satan is bringing everything he can at that thing. But he's drawn strength from the Lord. Too many Christians are throwing in the towels. (laughs) They get a little persecuted, a little criticized. You know, things maybe don't go their way or whatever. Well, I'm just going to, you know. No, 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 no. We serve God because he laid down his life for us and he loves us. Amen? Amen. Now, this one's prophetic. There's a last day's impartation of strength and energy from the Lord for every believer. However, it's only for those who keep his ways. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanliness of my hands. He recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord, have not wickedly departed from my God. And so it's for every Christian, every believer. However, it comes with a condition, like I mentioned before, condition is that we we continue to serve him. We continue to serve him. And so Paul goes on and says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. We're learning about that on Wednesday nights here at 7 o'clock. You can get in-depth teaching on that. It would really be great. See you here on Wednesday. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now before that, he says, well, after that, he says, For we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. And he lists out four regions or four arenas of spiritual beings that we fight against. Now, Jesus defeated them, but we need to put them in their place. And so, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word wiles here means tactics, strategies from the enemy. And so, a lot of times what Lucifer will do, he'll appoint a demon to a believer to just create chaos in life. And the higher your rank in the kingdom of God is, the higher demons will be assigned to you. I feel them every week. I put them in their place, you see. And so when you hear of 42% of pastors quitting the ministry, principalities of discouragement just haunt them every day. So the higher you go up, you start leading a small group, you start doing more ministry, and you taste of of the great goodness. I mean, how exciting it is and all that. The greater pressure there is. Now that pressure is coming from darkness, resisting against the truth. Because Satan is the god of this world. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The cattle on a thousand hills is the Lord. Haggai 2.8, the silver and the gold is the Lord. But the Antichrist spirit running this world is not of the Lord at all. So Satan is on the lease if you understand your Bible. And time is running short, and as 
we get closer and closer to the rapture, there's going to be more intensity like a woman giving birth to a baby. That's why you're seeing so many things and prophecies colliding right now in the world today because we're getting closer and closer to the rapture. How many glad you're going up in the rapture, man? That awesome old man. That'd be sweet. But you don't want to be here around when that thing goes. That's why it's critically important to have our lamps filled with oil. Our lamps filled with oil. Matthew 25 is a rapture parable to the church today and to the Jewish community as well. Ten virgins, five had their lamps filled with oil, five did not. And the five that didn't wanted to get oil from the five who did, but they didn't, they didn't want to take the time to put into it to get the oil in them. So the oil of spirit. So wiles. So back to my point is that the devil, he'll, and I'm not trying to scare anyone to tell you the truth, okay? There's an unseen realm, and we have authority in that realm. We have armor, put it on. We have the sword of the spirit, use it. But he will study a believer for years before he lays down an incredible temptation. That's why you see some of these ministers who have served God for years, and all of a sudden, there's this thing in their life that either way back here they didn't crucify it or something. I remember Brother Hagin saying this in, in, in classes at my Bible college. He said, it doesn't matter how far on fire for God you get, you've got to stay consistent. He goes, if I would just walk away from sowing the word into my heart and sowing to the spirit and all that, my old man would take over again. And the same sins that once had me would have me again. And it's true. It's true. So you lasso those passions. You lasso them by walking in the Spirit. But what Satan will do is he will study your weaknesses. He won't come after your strengths. He wouldn't dare do that. He'll come after your weakness, and we all have weaknesses. He'll come after your weakness in a weak moment. And his point is this, and it's not that you're evil. You're not. You, you're, you're the righteousness of God. It, it, it's that when you, you, you get worn down, by circumstances of life that can be totally out of your control. Totally out of your control. And he takes those, he jumps on them, and then jumps on your confession too. Well, here we go again. It's never going to turn around. Don't say that. Don't say that. Say, well, the greater one's within me. I'm facing this, but God's going to bring me through. Amen. See, I'm more than a conqueror to face this and to overcome it. That's why we have faith, to overcome. And so he'll study somebody for years before he lays down an incredible temptation. But we have power and authority over them. Be strong in the Lord. If God's word says to do it, guess what we can? I love this. Be strong in the power of his might or his strength. Not your strength, but God's power and strength. And so being strong in God's might means to sow to the Spirit, sowing the Spirit is drawing from God's might and strength. Now, sowing to the Spirit will result in unusual downloads of God's strength, a, new, a drenching of God's strength in our life. And this is the prophetic part, if not all of it was, is that there's an impartation of strength for every believer for the last days. How many believe that with all their heart? There's an impartation of strength for every believer for the last days who will draw near and accept it. Now, here's some things that happen when we wait upon the Lord. Number one, we renew our strength. We look to that. Number two, God will prolong your days. All through the word of God, it says he'll prolong your days. You'll mount up like wings like eagle. You'll redeem the time. You'll actually redeem the time. My friends who went up north and they had a blast, all that came back totally with no energy, yet I had all the energy in the world drawn strength from the Lord. All right, You will run and not be weary, and there's a new impartation of strength for the last days. Wow, man. I don't know about you, but I want an impartation of strength from the Lord, way more than what I have. And see, this is one of the reasons we come to church, no matter what the subject is, because there's a gift for you every Sunday at church. See? There's a gift of impartation. An impartation is an anointing. Is an anointing. 
And there's an impartation of strength for the last days to win and to conquer and to live out your life with joy and not sorrow. Amen? Amen. Father, we worship you right now. We're just so glad that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. We're so glad that we can sow to the Spirit and reap life everlasting. We're glad, Lord, that you're the greater one that lives on the inside of us. We're glad that there's the, an impartation of strength for the last days that is so important for us to receive. Now, as heads are bowed right now, how many say with an upraised hand, Pastor John, I want an impartation of strength. Man, I want that. If that's you, just raise your hand. Okay, yep, many hands are going up. Stand to your feet right now. I want to pray over you. And as you receive as well, for those who raise their hands, Heavenly Father, right now, as we lift our hands to you, Lord, I come in agreement with those believers who raise their hand, Lord, and I thank you for an impartation of strength right now, Lord, to come upon them in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, said, as we wait upon you, there's an exchange that takes place. Lord, I thank you for that impartation of strength for the last days to go out on a winning note in Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for boldness. We thank you for confidence, Lord, because you said that the righteous are as bold as lions. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for, for giving us opportunities to witness and to share about people, about the joy that we have in our life and the goodness of God upon our life as well. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for Psalm 91. It says, no evil will befall us, neither any plague come near our dwelling. You shall give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. A thousand fall by our side, 10,000 our right hand, but it will not come near us. Finally, Lord, we thank you as our heads are bowed that you sent Jesus to die a miserable death on the cross. Who took our place, became our substitute, that we might be forgiven and stand clean in the eyes of Almighty God. Wow, that's powerful. Lord, we thank you for that. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess Jesus as Lord, you will be saved. So peradventure, you're here today or watching by online, but you never recall a time where you invited the Lord to come in your life. Now's your opportunity. Today is the day of salvation. Don't let anything stop it. We're living in the last days. It's time to come clean with God. It's time to get right with God as well. Say this with me. Many believers will say it, helping those in the auditorium as well as online to turn your heart over to God today. Credible invitation from the Lord. Say, dear God in heaven, I admit I've, I missed it. I've broken your laws and commands. But today I come home. God, forgive me of all my sin. Jesus, come into my heart. Make your home in me. I boldly confess, you're my savior. You're my Lord. You're my healer. You're my deliverer. You're my protector. You're my provider. Today and always, in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Father, I just thank you again for supernatural strength coming upon every believer in this auditorium and those watching online, an impartation of strength for the last days in Jesus' name. Energy from the Lord. Everyone say, energy from the Lord. Energy from the Lord. Lord, we receive that in the name of Jesus. Whoo, I'm glad I came to church. I feel more energetic. <laughs> oh, God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Altar workers will be up here if you need further prayer. If you invited the Lord to come in your life, Please come forward. Tell somebody what happened. That would be great. You're dismissed. Have a great day. If you would like more information about Mount Hope Church or Pastor John Gallinetti, visit our website at mhcgb.com.